I'm at the top of the list. I take risk because I'm not insecure about myself or my manhood. Let me see that song. If you never saw Cisco perform live on stage, just know you missed out on an epic R&B culture moment because, damn, no one did it like him. And if you're just hearing the name for the first time, then seriously, what have you been listening to? Cisco has been dropping hits since the early 2000s. And one thing fans love the most about him is his quick feet when he makes the dance moves. Dude knows how to make you want to jump off your feet and do a Michael Jackson moonwalk, especially in his single, Gotta Get It. To make you listen to me, do you have to see me flashing in? But just when his music started blowing up the charts, he seemed to just, poof, vanish. What happened to Cisco? And why did this guy suddenly go off the radar? It all started on November 9th, 1978, in Baltimore, when Mark Altavan Andrews, going by the stage name Cisco, was born to parents Alonzo and Carolyn Andrews. They were like any other average family. You know, daddy was an electrician and mommy was a social security worker. His father got him into the Megenthaler Vocational Technical High School, thinking his son would follow in his footsteps. School was cool and all, but it's where he teamed up with Woody, Nokio, and Jack. Jazz. They weren't just classmates, they were future bandmates, flipping fudge by day at the fudgery and flipping gospel harmonies by night. Fast forward to 92, and these kids, just 14 and fearless, decided to go legit, forming the iconic Drew Hill, named after the very park Cisco used to roam around in. I mean, talk about keeping it real with your roots. One thing is for sure, he knows how to set himself apart with that signature hairstyle and color. This is what he had to say about it. When I chose to dye my hair blonde is because I got my heart broken. I was uh, dating a 10th grader when I was a 9th grader. Uh -huh. She broke my heart. I, like, I wanted to just kind of be somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I saw Diddy Baby Mother. She uh, actually um, styled us in the Big Bad Mama video with Damn. Foxy Brown. Yeah, that's kind of ironic. It kind of went full circle. And her hair was, she was actually, like, she did, like, the kind of platinum blonde thing. And I was just like, that. Done. But let's be frank. High school halls ain't got nothing on the stage of life. Post-graduation in 94, Cisco wasn't just dreaming. He was doing, sending shockwaves through the music scene. And through all the ups and downs, including welcoming his daughter Shayon into the world, who was right there with that unwavering support? Mama Andrews. Because behind every great artist, there's a great mom waving that magic wand of encouragement. Two years after high school, the Drew Hill boys hit it big and got signed to Island Records in 1996. They recorded their first song, How Deep Is Your Love? You know that he can't go like me. But you know that can't freak like me. And they were serving vocals, cool dance moves, and sexiness. Of course, he was the lead performer of the group, but his reign in the R&B group was as brief as a lit matchstick. He soon left the group to pursue a solo career and inked a groundbreaking multi-album deal with Def Soul, the R&B powerhouse under Def Jam. This contract set the stage for solo projects from each member of Drew Hill, fueling excitement among fans for what they dubbed the Drew World Order. The clause of this contract was that in 2001, the band would reunite and drop an album. Later that year, Cisco released his debut album, Unleash the Dragon. It was a banger. Here I come, this on me back. Try to hold him back, I'm about to let the dragon. This album landed him on the Billboard 200. The singles from the album Incomplete from their covers to my covers, wanna lay with me. and the Evergreen Thong Song rose to number one and three on the Billboard Hot 100. Thong Song even won him Best Hip Hop Video at the MTV Awards. Isn't that the smoothest way to kickstart your journey to fame? Oh, by the way, did you know that Thong Song wasn't even written for Cisco originally? At the time, me and Tim, we basically were in a creative space thinking about Michael Jackson a lot. We knew we eventually wanted to get on Mike's album. So we were doing a lot of ideas that were out of the box from the normal things people had heard us do. So that was creatively this new sound we were trying to forge before we were even in touch with Cisco. I know he's adding a kick in. It just sounded very urgent. You knew that it was a game changer. But again, we're thinking 
Michael Jackson. At the time, he wasn't thinking Cisco. It must have been some intervention, right? Also, Cisco had this to say about the Thong song. I wanted people to be happy when they heard Thong song. I made the song extremely simple, but it's a lot of complex uh, things going on in music. For instance, I got some people who played on Star Wars. I studied like a lot of different um, classical songs before we had written the whole string section. And the reason why I wrote it was because initially the song had a Beatles sample in it from Eleanor Rigg. I had pretty much the whole song written. I was like, yo, what if, what if like right, right, right here, I was just like, that thong, 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 thong. They was like, nah, you, you won't do that. I was like, I think I will. Because of his excellence, both in the studio and on stage, folks were already comparing Cisco to MJ. You know how it is on these streets. When I was a kid, maybe five years old, I saw Michael Jackson do the moonwalk. And when I saw him do that, it felt like the world stopped for a minute. And I remember in that moment, I was like, that's what I want to do. And so when I met Michael back in 2001, and he flew me out to meet him, that was kind of a mic drop moment for me. And that's when the dragon disappeared. Yep. But his biggest hits gave him some of his biggest troubles. Yep, turns out the famous line, because she was living La Vida Loca in Thong Song, came from Ricky Martin's Living La Vida Loca, which was written by Desmond Child. Inside out, living La Vida Loca. And so, even though the song topped the charts and everyone picked up their calculators trying to figure out how much Cisco made from it, he lost way more than that in a lawsuit. The thing is, Cisco thought Desmond Child was his homeboy and wouldn't mind. But when the song blew up, he wanted the gains and he got it. After the court cases and the back and forth, Desmond Child got the biggest share of the song's publishing rights and royalties. Yikes, this industry isn't friendly. One thing about Cisco, he never let anything hold him back. In 2001, he bounced back hard and went ahead to host a dance competition program called Cisco's Shakedown on MTV. The same year, his hit song, How's It's Gonna Be, was selected to be part of the movie Rush Hour 2. Behind the scenes, he was cooking his second studio album, which he dropped later that year and went platinum with his hit songs, Can I Live and Dance For Me. Fans expected him to have gold-certified songs by this time, so this was way below expectations. In an attempt to keep his career from going down the drain, Cisco reunited with Drew Hill, which saw the release of its third album in late 2002. But like his previous album, this was a flop, and it was the end of their recording contract with Island Records. This was one of the worst moments of Cisco's career, and like the Avatar, he vanished when the world needed him most. When Thong Song blew up like crazy, in the song you're wearing the the bikini shorts. Who was? And the gay the, the gay rumors started going crazy on it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Like, what? How did wait, you react wait, with all that wait, 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 wait! What? What? You said in the song I wore bikini shorts. I wore a mankini in uh, on um, Celebrity Big Brother. It was a challenge for who would be hunk of the house. So I took it was a high risk, high reward. The lady said I got the greatest ass on the planet, and she thought I had something stuffed in the front of the mankini. And I won and walked out the house with a crown. That was the highest rated show in Celebrity Big Brother history. The gay rumors is once again unwarranted when I guess it was because my hair's blonde. Oh, that's right. Everybody dyeing their hair blonde right now. Everybody's rocking leather right now. Everybody's doing everything I did back in the day. Are they gay too? Nobody asked nobody else what they gay, but I'm gay. I, I'm just a trailblazer, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm at the top of the list. I take risks because I'm not insecure about myself or my manhood. Do you know what it means for your record label to end your contract? Just ask Cisco. There were so many claims that he was a difficult person to work with. Once you get to that level of success, you have to play the game. And that's what I did not understand. Me and the label just started bumping heads because I was hard to work with. Being famous or just successful brings a lot of hate to you. Cause tell me why even R. Kelly was dissing Cisco. I mean, Cisco was literally a baby in the industry, but everyone was throwing stones at him. R. Kelly said Cisco was trying to copy him and went ahead to diss him in a song called Hold Up. And he literally said, 20s on the drop, blue and yellow rocks, Kiki yelling stop, Cisco's album flopped. Don't bother checking it up. It was a leaked track. Cisco was all in his feelings and at odds with the record label over collabs and calling out the industry's shady side, which kind of put a damper on his rise to the top. 
He was vibing for a comeback, hoping to channel all that energy back into what he loves the most, laying down tracks and killing it in the music game. But wait, there's more. Cisco wasn't about to play by the rules set by the record label, especially when it came to his crew back in Baltimore. He was dead set on bringing his hometown buddies into the spotlight, believing in the talent that the label just couldn't see. I thought that once you get success, your job was the Robin Hood, the situation. You know what I mean? I'm like, from Baltimore. Nobody has anything. So if somebody had talent, I was hiring my uncle, my cousin, you know, getting people that I knew to run the studio. Me and the label just started bumping heads because I was hard to work with because instead of putting their person behind the console, I would put my person behind the console. Instead of getting their rapper to rap on it, I get my cousin to rap on it because I'm like, hey, we going to eat too. You know what I mean? I was doing the best I could to, you know, feed my family, bring the money back to Baltimore. Talk about loyalty, folks. And what does a man do when the industry big shots won't budge? He starts his very own label, that's what. Boom, Dragon Music Group was born. All because Cisco wanted to prove that Baltimore's got game too. Now, doesn't that make you wonder what epic tunes and artists came out of Dragon Music Group? But you know what they say, mess around and find out. Cisco found out the hard way how much influence big record labels have in people's careers. They call the shots, and if they want you out of the mainstream, it can happen in seconds. And that is exactly what happened to Cisco. Mainstream executives dumped him, just like they did to Carrie Hilson, but that is a story for another day. Record label troubles weren't the only thing threatening Cisco's career. He also had family drama. The singer was accused of sexual assault by a lady named Jamila Farid. According to her, she spent the night with Cisco in Zurich when she was just 14 and later found out she was pregnant. This happened in 1999 when Cisco was 21. But the baby mama only showed up 10 years later while Cisco was at Big Brother. So not only was he a father, but he had also committed a crime. He slept with a minor. The baby mama filed for child support and won the case. And Cisco has been paying that ever since. Honey, did you know that Cisco had a fight with one of the members of Jagged Edge Group? He called it a little squirmish, but child, that didn't look like no squirmish to me. Take a look for yourself. Was it a squirmish or a beatdown? You be the judge. He says they're good now, but I don't know. He's a feisty one. Thank goodness Cisco had a passion for his craft. He never gave up. In fact, that same year, Cisco released the third album of his career with the Drew Hill Group titled Independence Day through Cater Entertainment. The idea was to prove they were no longer associated with Def Soul Records, but were free to work with whomever they wanted. At this point in his career, Cisco was at full stretch, singing his solo songs in concerts and events all around the globe together with his group. <laughs> <laughs> 2015 saw him releasing his third and last solo album, The Last Dragon. Kind of like he was announcing his exit from the music scene, but once again, some of his singles became hits. Songs like Lips and A-List were dope. Thong Song's troubles came back in 2017 when Cisco filed a lawsuit against a company named 27 Red Music. He said this company owed him royalties from Thong Song. Word on the street was he hired 27 Red Music to collect royalties from all the publishing companies he's worked with between 1996 and 2005. But they never handed over the money to him, a whopping 600K. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think Cisco was never the problem. Everybody was just out to get him. Aside from music, Cisco had a love life, which was quite interesting. He and his longtime girlfriend, Elizabeth Pham, had been on and off for years until 2018, when they finally tied the knot. At the wedding, Cisco stole the spotlight by serenading his beloved wife and mother of his children with none other than his scandalously catchy 1999 hit, Thong Song. While some people went along with it, other people just felt he was doing too much. Like, why on earth are you singing your most controversial song on your wedding day? Trust Cisco to handle it. Dude said he was singing about the last thing he'll ever see. I promise I'm not laughing. Before this time, they already had two kids together, Ryo and Coco Andrews. But you know how it is with celebs and their love lives. Roller Coaster doesn't even begin to cover it. 
Fast forward a bit, and who comes along but R&B songstress Samantha Tamania? Cue the love songs and heartbreak hits, right? I know you must be wondering how much money this guy has earned for all the headaches the industry has brought to him. It definitely is less money than the guys he started with. I'm talking about Nelly, Ashanti, and the rest of the gang. But according to some publications, his net worth is estimated to be $6 million. And if you think Cisco's wings were broken just because he was blacklisted, well, they weren't. The R&B singer claims that Mario, who also came out of Baltimore, is way behind him. And this came after Mario said he deserves to be immortalized alongside Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, and Beyonce. Beyond that, Cisco still works with the R&B group Drew Hill. The OG members of the band left, and some even quit music altogether. But the band still sells out concerts and is kicking it like never before. In fact, word on the street is that they have a tour going on. So if you want to see your favorite R&B rapper, you might want to get those tickets. Cisco is proof that if you want something bad enough, you can get it. You just got to be stubborn, stay true to yourself, and remember why you started. We love us a fighter. What's your favorite Cisco song so far? Let us know in the comments.